question 18 says, which of the following organic acids is, is present in vinegar? Now, vinegar is the natural source of uh, ethanoic acid. That's um, CH3, COOH. Well, the natural source of ethanoic acid is ants, ants or bees, bees things, right? Ants or bees things, right? And this is also called what? Formic acid. Formic acid, just like ethanoic acid is called um, acetic acid. That's the old name though. So here this HC OOH. Butanoic acid is found in what? Butter. Natural source of butanoic acid is what? Butter. That's C3H7 COOH. Butanoic acid. Propanoic acid. Yeah, propanoic acid is found in human sweat. Yes. It's what is found in human sweat. It's also called propionic acid. But this one is called butyric acid. It's called butyric acid. But it's called propionic acid. Right? Okay. And the formula for propanoic acid is what? C2H5 COOH. All right. So, question 19. Which of the following compounds would react with dilute HNO3 to at equivalence points to give an acidic solution? Okay. This guy here, dilute HNO3 is a strong acid. That's the first thing. It's a strong acid. So if it must react with a substance that will end up producing an acidic solution at equivalence point, it means that that substance must be what? A weak base. Are we together? Must be a weak base. Because if it's a strong base, it means that a strong base will completely neutralize the HNO3 and the solution obtained at equivalence point will be what a neutral solution. So of these options, which one is the weak base here or a weak alkali? This is a strong base. 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 So this is a weak ammonium hydroxide. This is the weak alkali or weak base. All other ones are all strong alkalis. Right? Question 20. The percentage by mass of chromium in chromium trioxide is what? So simple. How do you calculate percentage by mass of, a, of, of an element in a compound? Percentage mass will be what? Um, total mass of the element, which is two atoms of chromium, all over what the molar mass of the chromium times 100 over one. So that's two times 52 all over. 2 times 52 plus uh, 16 times 3. Yeah. 10 times what? 100 over 1. I you evaluate that, what do you get? That will give you 68.4 percent. That's um, that will be 102 divided by 152. Yeah. Sorry, 104 divided by 152 times 100. That gives you 68.4%. Can confirm that. All pure samples, 21 says all pure samples of the chemical substance contains the same elements combined together in the same proportion by mass. This is a statement of the word, this is a statement of the law of definite what proportions now what does that mean it means that if you get samples of a particular compound or substance from different sources provided they are pure they will contain what the same elements combined in the same ratio by what mass or proportion by mass For example if you get water from tap you get tap water get rain water get let's say spring water 
provided they are all what pure, right? If you carry the analysis of these sources of water or samples of water, you find out that they contain what hydrogen and what oxygen ratio what two to what one. That is what the law says because the formula is what H two what O, right? The law of multiple proportion says that it's where elements react that the very masses of element A which react to the fixed mass of element B are in what simple multiple what ratios okay that's why you have two compounds like FeCl2 FeCl3 or CuO and Cu2 for this copper one of that and copper two there was the ratio here here the ratio of ion to ion 2 is um one ratio 2 it is one ratio 3 right here is one ratio 1 here is 2 ratio 1 so you can see the ion here is fixed while the chlorine varies here the oxygen is fixed while the varies so that's the law of multiple proportion well law of conservation of mass says that matter is neither what created nor destroyed during a chemical what reaction but it's always transformed from one form to another fine now the principle of law of conservation of mass is the reason why chemical equations must be what balanced because it is believed that the total masses of the reactants and products before and after the reactions must be what the same so let's move which of the following atoms has three unpaired electrons? Well, it has to do with three unpaired electrons. You cannot use KLMN notation to decode this. At this point, you must use your word SPDF notation. And not just SPDF, you must also use what? The orbital diagram. So this, this will be 1s2, that one is 6, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, Two. So we are interested in the last orbital, right? Which is P. In this case, it's P1, 2. 1, 2. The P subshell has three orbitals. So, and there are only two electrons here. So that's not what we are looking for. What three? Nitrogen is seven. That's 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So I think we already got, we already got the answer. One. Two. That's one. That's two. That's three. According to Hans rule, now first, first of all, obey Hans rule. If you don't obey Hans rule, you'll not get the correct answer. So the answer is what? Nitrogen. Let's just continue. Let's see whether we are actually correct. It's one S two, two S two, two P four. Okay. So P. There are four electrons in P. This one, two, three, four, two electrons. So that's not what you are looking for. This one is nine. That's one S two, two S two, two P five. It is the powers of each subshell that gives us what the number of what electrons. So P five. One, two, three, four, five. So the answer is what? The answer is nitrogen based on the question. This has two unpaired. This has two unpaired. This has one unpaired, right? So question 23 says, the energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from an atom in the gaseous state is the what? That is ionization energy. Ionization energy. And it is what? It is always endothermic. The endothermic process means that its value, as IE, is what? Positive. The value is always positive. Bond energy is the energy required to break or form one mole of a covalent bond. 
of course potential energy as we already know from your physics and so is the energy a body possesses due to its what position at rest while activation energy is the minimum energy reactants must possess for a reaction to do what or call or it can be said to do the energy barrier of the reaction okay so if you are learning anything so far don't forget to hit the like buttons and subscribe to this channel if you are yet to do so if there's anything you don't understand you can drop your question in the comment section and we'll attend to it or if you have any question on any part of your syllabus or if there's something you want us to treat you can drop it in the comment section right question 24 which of the following pairs of hydrocarbons undergoes hydrogenation hydrogenation is an addition reaction hydrogenation is an addition reaction addition of what addition of what hydrogen right and which organic compounds undergo addition reaction of course it's what the alkenes alkenes undergo addition reaction because they are what unsaturated they are unsaturated hydrocarbons unsaturated hydrocarbons so they undergo addition reactions right so how do you get the answer which of these pairs are alkenes right so what's the general formula for alkenes cn h2 and so which of these pairs their formulas conform to cn h2 n this one is c2h4 okay this is an alkene this is an alkene this is an alkene this is not an alkene so of course this guy is out all right this is c3 H8, this is not an alkene. C388 is not an alkene. So this is wrong. C2H6 is not an alkene. C2H6 doesn't conform to CNH3. So this is not an alkene. This is wrong. The same way this was wrong was wrong, right? So it means these guys are what wrong. So what will be the answer? E. Let's see. This is an alkene C2H4 and C3H6. All right. So the answer is what? B. That's ethene and propene. Which of the following sets of subatomic particles have approximately the same mass? Okay, so we have proton, neutron, electron. The mass, this guy is 1, this is 1, this is 1 over 18, 50, or thereabout. And in terms of charge, this guy is plus one or plus this guy is neutral or zero or nil. But this one is minus one. So what are we looking for? Same mass. Okay. Mass. This and this has proton and what? Neutron. That's C. And note that it is the proton and the neutron that contribute to the mass of an atom. Well, the proton and electrons are responsible for the charge of an atom. And when the charge of an atom changes, the number of protons does not change. It is the number of electrons that changes. Take note of that. Which means that it is either the atom has gained an electron or it has lost an electron. And when it loses an electron, it forms a positive ion. That's a cation. And when it gains an electron, it forms a negative ion. That's an anion. What's the IOPAC name of the following compound? Okay. First of what homologous series will this belong to? What's the parent chain? Yeah. Is there a functional group? Not really, but there is a chlorine atom. There, so it's more like what the halo alkane. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the longest chain, right? This is the longest chain. Are you sure, are you sure that's the longest chain? Let's check. Okay, how about one, two, three, four, five, six? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, one. Okay, the longest chain is what? Six, which is what? Hexane. Okay, and given that there's no double bond anyway, all the carbon carbon bonds are single bonds. So it's an N, that's an alkane, right? Good. Now, this guy here, the chlorine atom, is the foreign body there, right? That's the only one that is not a carbon or hydrogen what? atom, right? So we give it a priority when we account. We count the parent chain in such a way that this chlorine atom will take the lowest possible number that it can. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. That's counting from left to right. What will count from right to left? Let's see. From right to left, that will be one, this will be two, 
this will be three, this will be four, this will be five, this will be what, six. So the chlorine atom here has two positional numbers, three and four. Which one is lower? The lower one is what, three. So this will give us what, three chloro. That will be three chloro, right? So which one here has three chloro? D and what, A, good. So anything without three chloro is out, right? Now the current chain is six, right? Means that is hexane. Having established the position that gives the chlorine atom, which the main substituent here, the low worst possible number that's left to right, then we are just going to stick to that direction and continue the numbering, right? Or assign the positional numbers for other substituent. So this guy here, this is a methyl, or these are methyl groups, right? This one is attached to position two, while this one is attached to position four. So the methyl group has two comma what, four, right? And because there are two, that will be what? Dimethyl, dimethyl. Two comma four dimethyl. Do we have something like that? Yes, dimethyl, dimethyl, good. So we have three chloro, two, four dimethyl hexane, and the other one, two, four dimethyl, three chloro hexane. So between chloro and dimethyl, which one will come first? Of course, it's chloro because of what alphabetical word order, right? Here yeah, the C comes before the word M, right? It's not C before D, but C before what M. This di, this prefix here does not affect the alphabetical word order. Is that understood? So that's why the correct answer is what? Three chloro, two, four dimethyl hexane even though two is lower than what three is that understood so correct answer is what d so 27 how many moles of calcium trouser carbonate four are there in 3.42 grams of the compound the molar mass of calcium trouser carbonate four is 100 grams per mole okay how do you calculate number of moles number of moles is what n is also what mass over what molar mass right and what's the mass here mass is 3.42 what's the molar mass 100 3.40 right by 100 gives you what 0 0.0342 which is the answer and not d question 28 the sub energy level that contains a maximum number of 10 electrons is what now these are all sub energy levels right here, this one contains only one orbital. This contains three orbitals. This contains seven orbitals. And this contains five orbitals. And each orbital can take a maximum of what two electrons, as you can see here. Each orbital can take a maximum of two electrons. So five times two gives us what? 10 electrons. Yeah, seven times two gives us 14 electrons. Three times two gives us six electrons. And one times two gives us what? Two electrons. So the answer to the question, which sort level contains a maximum number of 10 electrons is what? D.